boys and girls. Hope that you enjoyed revving up your design skills on that car for the last couple of weeks. This week, we're going to shift gears and we're going to do more of a craft type of project. Um, and the cool thing about it is that it's a craft with a purpose. We talk a lot about service and um, serving others, showing our love of God through service to others. And that's what this is about. These are May baskets. When I was a kid, every year in school, we would make a May basket. And then I always looked forward to putting it on a porch, ringing a doorbell, and then running to hide for the person to come and find the beautiful basket at their door. So as you're getting started, the first thing you want to consider is where you're going to make things and keeping your area clean and protected. Uh, you may have a dedicated craft area in your home where it's not a big deal to make a mess, but I'm working on my dining room table. And so you can see I put down some mats to protect the area and I also put down a plastic garbage bag that um, I split to cover my table check with a parent to make sure that you have adequate protection of your area. Also check with them about gathering materials. They may have some things to suggest and for sure we want to keep you safe. So before you grab scissors, um, especially if you're a younger student, check with your parents and be sure um, what kind of tools you need to work with and whether they want to be there to supervise you. Some of our younger students might love just taking an old gift bag if you've got an extra one and maybe some stickers. I found some stickers and taking some stickers and decorating the bag. Maybe you could draw on the bag or put stickers on it. You could make a very attractive May basket just by adding stickers and things to a gift bag. A small one, not a great big one, but a small one. And you could go ahead and stick your flowers coming up out of here that you make, and it would still hang really nice on somebody's door or sit on their porch. So that's an idea for our younger students. If you're in kindergarten or first grade or second grade, you might enjoy doing that. You could draw on the bag. You could write somebody's name on the bag. There's lots of things that you could do. So first, you've got to see what kind of paper do you have available to make your cone from. I had cardstock and I could do that. Here's a cardstock one and you could decorate that just with some stickers or some markers, but I know some of you probably don't have construction paper or cardstock at home. You may just have printer paper. And so I'm going to make one out of printer paper to show you how pretty it can turn out. I'm going to start on the paper and I'm going to start in one corner and I'm going to work up this way, making a fan shape. The design can be anything you want but you want to keep it going in a fan. And so here I go, starting my fan. See what I mean? It is in the shape of a fan. And so I keep going up the page in a fan shape. I'm going to finish my design and then I'll come back and show you what to do next. So I finished my design. Remember, I kept it in a fan shape, so it started in this corner and it goes up and you see the nice fan shape. That's important for making a cone. My paper is a little sticky right now because I put some glue on the back of it. Really, you don't need glue up in the white part, but down here in the color part, I do. If you've got construction paper or if you're using cardstock, you don't need to do this. 
but because I'm using just regular printer paper, my paper is too flimsy and I put glue on the back so that I can put another piece down nice and tight on top of it, just smooth it all out. And now when I pick it up, it'll be a little sturdier. So the next thing I'm going to do before we make the cone is cut it out. I don't need the white part at the top. So that's what I'm going to do. So now. I've cut my fan out. Notice it's a pretty fan on this side and then it's a little weird over here. That's the opposite corner. I started here and came up and then this corner's a little awkward. That's okay because we're gonna roll that and it's going to be inside the cone. Let's do that now. So I've got my design down and my paper. I'm going to start my cone. My cone's going to be about this big around. And so as you can see, as I fold it over, I'm gonna need glue here. And I'm also going to need some glue um, a little bit over in here. I'm going to go ahead and put that on I've got my Elmer's ready and I'm gonna squeeze out my glue just back and forth in a zigzag. And then I'm gonna leave it laying on its side in case I need it again because my glue is a little low there and it takes it a while to shake down to the end if I don't leave it. I'm spreading the glue out with my finger and gonna wipe it on a little piece of paper towel. And now I'm going to roll the cone over. You don't want to have it exactly straight with the edge, otherwise this edge is going to be shorter than that one. I think I need to keep it like this. And do you see how I'm working with the tip to make it pointy? If you're younger, you might get a parent to help you with that. And I'm just getting my cone down in the glue and rolling, 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 and there's my cone. Look how pretty it turned out. Now, on the back side, it's okay if your design doesn't line up exactly. It's still going to be colorful and pretty. Okay, I've got one big paper clip, and I'm going to clip it right at the top, and I wanna put the clip going over that seam where the two pieces came together. That will help hold it nice and tight so that when it dries, I can take that off and I'll have a nice tight cone. I found at the bottom of cones, I have to kind of work with them to roll them a little bit and work them to get that to hold. As long as they've got plenty of glue there, you're fine. And then you need to sit it up in something. It could be a coffee cup that you could sit it up in to dry. I've got these spools of ribbon and that's the perfect holder for that. So I'm gonna just sit that up in there like that. All right, guys, I let my baskets dry overnight. And when your basket is dry, you can remove the paper clip and it's held together nice and tight there. I've already started punching holes in the side. I'm gonna punch another one right across here. Go ahead and push it all the way down and punch in. I've also already cut ribbon. Now I'm using curling ribbon. I keep different colors of curling ribbon for gift wrap at home. If your parent says that you have some of that, it's great to use. If not, they might have an old gift bag that you could use the handles from it to finish off your cone. They might have string. Check with a parent to see what's available if you're not sure um, and be sure it's okay if you use what you use, okay? I'm gonna go ahead and slide this ribbon. I made a really long ribbon. Part of it is going to be for the handle and part of it's going to be for curling, just to be pretty. So I'm gonna slide from the inside out and from the inside out. And I wanna leave plenty of handle up at the top because it's gonna be for hanging on a doorknob and you want room for your flowers to stand up in the basket. That's gonna leave me these nice long pieces on the side and I can tie in a knot. I'm gonna tie once and then twice. You have to tie twice or it's going to come undone and then your May basket falls off the doorknob. Doesn't look too attractive, okay? So tie twice on both sides. I'm just gonna tie one side now, but you get the idea. The last thing I'm going to do is curl. This is called curling ribbon. 
the ribbon arches and the underside of the ribbon is the part that curls. I'm gonna open up my scissors wide, lay it against the ribbon. My thumb is on top of the ribbon and the scissors are on the bottom and I just pull it along and it gives a nice little curl, which is a pretty decoration on the side of my basket. Okay, I'll finish that up. So I've tied off both sides of the comb basket and done the curling on the edge. You can see there's plenty of room here. If I wanna put some long stem flowers in there, I could from my yard or from the store. It's also great if you put Easter grass down in it and then maybe put some treats in there, chocolates or candies of some sort, something like that. So lots of fun. Wouldn't you love for somebody to hang one on your door and ring the doorbell and leave it for you to find? Now you can find someone to give that gift to.